one of the most important questions that we all get asked is advice and tips about how to raise our children in this land. How do we do tarbiyah of our children? How do we protect our children from the influences around? And as I have said many times that the Quran and Sunnah did not give us detailed specifications because this is something that changes from time to place to culture. But we find general guidelines. We find broad principles. So today, inshallah, we want to look at Surah Yusuf and the story of Yusuf because the story of Yusuf and Surah Yusuf, it is all about family dynamics. It's all about father and son and siblings and drama and, and, and boycotting and getting angry and doing things you shouldn't do and reconciliation. So today we're going to very quickly look at Surah Yusuf and extract from Surah Yusuf 10 benefits, 10 tarbawi or a relationship benefits about family relations. How should we deal with family? And how, especially father, son, or mother, daughter, how should we look at the benefits we can derive from Surah Yusuf? And of course, many more can be given, but we'll stick with 10 for today. The first of these lessons from Surah Yusuf, we notice throughout the entire story, the underlying sentiment of the strong love and the bond between Yaqub and between all of his children. There is an underlying strong motif that the family is held together by love. And the father is addressing his son, Ya Bunay. And the son is talking to the father, Ya Abati. And even when the other brothers do what they do, the father does not expel and boycott them. There is an entire sentiment of love underpinning the, the, the family of Yaqub And this shows us that one of the most important secret ingredients to keep your family together is to demonstrate and to have and to show that genuine love, empathy and love will gain you more than strictness and harshness. So the, the general rule, and of course Allah mentions in the Quran that when it comes to families, when it comes to spouses, which the family begins with, Allah is the one who has put love and tenderness between you. So even before there are children, there is love and tenderness. So then what's going to happen after? The whole family should have mawadda and rahma. So this is the first of the ten. The second lesson that we learn from uh, the story of Yaqub and Yusuf alayhi salam is that Yusuf feels such a relationship with Yaqub that he can go to his father and confide a secret. He can go to his father and say, Ya Abati, something happened, I want you to know about it. And so we find in here a relationship that has trust in it. And that is essential if you want your children to be able to grow up and practice Islam. Your children must be able to come to you and tell you something that is troubling them, something that is bothering them. Yeah, Yusuf saw something, he didn't know what to do. In our generation, many of that generation would go to their friends, go to social media, go to other people. But Yusuf went to his father, which indicates what? He had a relationship with his father that could allow him to confide, could allow him to open up and to tell him the issues he's facing. And this is a very, very key factor in a healthy father-son or mother-daughter or even mother-son or father-daughter relationship. There must be an openness and a trust and that is something that if you don't have it with your son or daughter then imagine when they're in trouble when an issue happens if they're not going to come to you who are they going to go to so you have to develop that type of relationship that they're able to confide in you like Yusuf goes to his father and confides so this is the second point that we learn and of course how you achieve that trust how you achieve that confidence, that is something nobody can teach you because it changes from person to person. It changes from father to son and mother to daughter. But the point is you must put it in your mind. You must develop that your young son or daughter. At this stage, Yusuf is probably eight, nine years old. And he is able to go to other people, but he knows he can go to his father. How did that trust come? You have to put it in your mind that my son or daughter should be able to confide in me. Because when they don't confide in you, the brothers of Yaqub, the brothers of Yusuf did not confide in Yaqub. You see what happens. When you're going to go behind your father's back, 
then you're in trouble. And it's a general, generally a dangerous path. But when you come to your father or your mother and you have that strength and relationship, then generally the parent will give you solid advice. So this is the second benefit we learn from the story of Yusuf and Yaqub. The third benefit we learn, and this is obvious and we all understand this, is that the importance of not giving your children an excuse to be jealous of another child. The importance of the parents not practicing favoritism. And this is a major problem in our culture. Major problem in the modern Muslim culture. That the favorite child is known to the other siblings. In this story, they knew Yusuf was favorite, but not because of something tangible. Simply, they could sense the emotion. You can't control emotion, right? But unfortunately, in our culture, all too many families, they demarcate this is the favorite one and everybody knows this is the favorite one and all of your attention and all of your resources and all of your wealth and money and private tuition and best university the favorite one and then the other ones you neglect and subhanallah children are looking for such an excuse and is going to be harmful and detrimental oh parents you have to make sure that outwardly there is nothing that can be detected as for inwardly that's between you and Allah but outwardly nothing should be able to be detected and especially between sons and daughters inheritance is something else gifts have to be equal don't make qiyas of inheritance upon gifts if you give your son a hundred dollar gift you should give your daughter a hundred dollar gift as well because equality in children in the, in this world has nothing to do with inheritance inheritance is a different thing altogether as for this world then you have to be equal now obviously what you gift is going to be different no problem but the expensiveness the amount that you're gifting there should be a relative similar now obviously another issue comes what if one of the child is 18 and the other is seven years old you cannot give the same understanding Understandable. But you have to put it in mind. What I gave to the 18-year-old. When the 7-year-old becomes 18, I have to give something similar like that. So you have to put this in mind so that there's no sense of, oh, so my brother got this, my sister got this, but when I needed it, my parents didn't do this. You don't realize, oh parents, the resentment that develops in a child's heart. And in the story of, of Yaqub alayhi salam, in fact, that resentment wasn't even physical it was emotional and yet still they sensed it and that resentment developed what if they could pinpoint and say look at what he's giving to yusuf how much worse it would have gotten so point number three the importance of being equal with your children in demonstrating care in demonstrating tuition in demonstrating education in demonstrating taking care of their needs when you give one of them a car by the time the other one gets to that age that person should also get a car or else they're gonna feel hold on this is not fair you as a parent have to make sure there is equality in this regard and by the way this is explicit in the hadith of the prophet a man came he had a favorite son and he gave a gift of a slave to his son the prophet said did you give your other children a same gift he goes no i didn't so the prophet said i cannot bear witness to zulm i cannot bear witness go away from me i cannot bear witness to this you are in my presence i have to speak out i cannot bear witness that you are mistreating the other children children by preferencing one over the others. This is an authentic hadith in Sahih Bukhari. So we learn this from the story as well. Point number four. Point number four. And this is an interesting point. It's not necessarily a positive. It's not necessarily a negative. Children are generally smarter than what we give them credit for. And children typically can easily outwit their parents. We see this in the story of Yaqub. They knew every point to to pinpoint they knew Yaqub was worried about Yusuf they knew Yaqub didn't like that Yusuf and his brethren are not friends together as much so they used that as an excuse and they said dear father you're gonna stop us from playing with our brother Yusuf we're gonna be more friendly we're gonna be closer together they knew their father was worried about some problem happening so, so don't worry we're going to protect him and they set up the stage they delayed until after Maghrib after sunset so the worry begins and they come with the whole story concocted and prepared right and these are teenagers and this is the reality. Our teenagers know social media and computers and technology way better than us. 
and we are left in the dark and they are already light years ahead of us. Similarly, it's human nature that because this child is yours, you changed his diapers. Now, when the child becomes 15 or 17, you still think that child is a baby. No, learn from the story of Yaqub. Give your children credit. Usually, your children know how to outwit you better than you know. And so be a little bit more con conscious in this regard. And this is the reality. Because psychologically, you're still looking at them as babies. But they're not babies. They're now young men and women. And they are far more culturally savvy. And far more computer savvy than you are. So keep this point in mind. We learned it from the, from the benefit of the story of Yusuf and Yaqub. But my next point is addresses the children. You might be able to deceive intellectually, but you cannot deceive emotionally. Because Yaqub knew something was wrong. Yaqub couldn't pinpoint. He's trying, but he knows in his heart. You have done something, right? And when Binyamin didn't come back, he said as well, you have done the same thing you did when Yusuf did. You're doing another makr. You're doing another trickery. I don't know the trickery, but I know you guys have tricked me. So, oh children, don't underestimate the intuition of your parents. Your parents might not know the culture as well as you do. They might not understand all of the lingo and you can deceive them and you, you pretend you're going somewhere else or not. But a mother's intuition and a father's intuition is something that is far more powerful than reason and logic. So be careful about this because Yaqub saw through his children even though they presented all the evidence in front of him. So this is another point that we learn and that is the, uh, the, the um, fifth point. The sixth point that we learn we benefit from this story. It's a very profound one. Wallahi, when I think about this, it's for me, it's one of the most emotional ones. Wallahi, honestly, it's so perplexing in some ways. Yaqub knows his own sons have done something to harm Yusuf. Can you imagine the pain the father would feel? Yaqub knows that Yusuf is now lost or maybe even dead or whatever. And who's responsible? The very people that are around him. And there is tension. You can tell in the story. The, the, the brothers come back and they say, for how long will you remember Yusuf? Until you go senile? Until you go mad? Come on, get over him. And the father says, I'm not even talking to you. I'm not complaining to you. I'm, cl I'm complaining to Allah. And Yaqub cries and cries till he goes blind. There's clearly tension. How could there not be? But he never cut them off. He never boycotted them. He never said, get away from me. Because he hoped and hoped and hoped he would recuperate all of them back. And he did. And this shows us the default. And I know this is a sensitive topic. But we learn from this. The default. There are always exceptions. May Allah protect all of us. If a son or daughter does something wrong, learn from this story. We have again this cultural issue. I'm not going to talk to you again. Khalas, don't come to this house. Whatever your child has done, inshallah guaranteed he didn't abduct another child and sell him into slavery. Okay? Whatever your child has done, he didn't tie his hands and throw him into a well. And then when a caravan came, sold him for a few measly dirhams. Come on, calm down. Whatever your son or daughter has done, it is not worse than what the brothers of Yusuf did to Yusuf. And yet the Prophet Yaqub, the Prophet Yaqub, knowing his children have done something, and there is tension, you're not going to ignore it. There is tension, but he realizes, I have to keep these children because I want them to come back. I want them to repent. I want them to be guided. And did they not repent in the end of the story? So the default, and I stand by what I say, yes, there might be exceptions here and there. But the default, oh Muslim parent, if your son or daughter goes down the path of ignorance, the path of darkness, the path of sin, the path of evil, the default, you don't cut off from them. There should be some ta'alluq and relationship. There should be some presence in their life because you want them to come back like Yaqub wanted his children to come back. So this is the uh, sixth uh, point that we learn. The seventh point that we learn, and it goes back to uh, the second point, but again, I want to develop it and, and to make it underscore it the, the, more, more explicitly, is that we learn from the story that jealousy, jealousy is much easier 
amongst blood relatives than amongst strangers. And jealousy becomes more powerful amongst family than amongst strangers. We learn this from the story of Yusuf and his brothers. Who amongst you is burning with jealousy because of Bill Gates and his billions? Nobody. Because of any multi-billionaire. No, it's there. But may Allah protect us if your cousin becomes a multi-millionaire. Shaitan's going to come to you. Who is he to become like this? If your brother, your sister, so be extra careful with family. Because family is where jealousy becomes exponential. Ironically, it is, it is what it is. Siblings, especially brothers and sisters. So learn from the story of Yusuf and be on extra guard, extra precaution. Because our Prophet ﷺ said, I warn you of being jealous. Because jealousy destroys your good deeds like a fire destroys twigs and branches. Je jealousy in your heart will make you a bad person. You will act in an evil manner. You will do something haram. You won't even realize it's haram. It was jealousy that caused the brothers of Yusuf to go so depraved. They literally took a seven year old tied him up threw him in a well sold him into slavery their own blood brothers they became blinded with jealousy you don't want to be like the brothers of Yusuf in order to not be like that you have to monitor your heart especially with your family most importantly with your siblings and your cousins and your extended family have a pure heart and follow Yusuf who had a pure heart and don't follow the brothers of Yusuf we learn from this story that jealousy within family it catches on very quickly and it becomes very powerful very quickly and you have to be extra careful for within family so this is point number seven point number eight we learned from this story that you will only keep a family together if you are on the forgiving end the story has constant forgiveness in it family is family and if they come to you and they apologize then immediately forgive the brothers apologize to Yusuf and they say that Allah chose you over us you are better than us and Yusuf said La lakum. there is no blame on you today Allah shall forgive you the brothers go back and they beg their father ya abana, inna kunna khati'in. Qala sawfa lakum rabbi. oh our fathers please forgive us we made a mistake immediately Immediately, Yaqub says, I will ask Allah to forgive you. Immediately, Yusuf and Yaqub, immediately forgive, forgive, forgive. So be like Yusuf, be like Yaqub. Yes, your family is going to hurt you. Yes, your brother and sister is going to say nasty things. Yes, wallahi, your immediate family is going to cause the most pain. But you want to be like Yusuf and Yaqub and forgive as much as you can so that you become the better person. Our Prophet ﷺ said, know that the one who forgives, Allah increases him in honor. The one who forgives your izzah is increased up. So follow the path of Yusuf and follow the path of the father of Yusuf in forgiving those that have harmed you. The the ninth lesson that we learn is one of the easiest ways to console your anger is what Yusuf says. His brothers sold him into slavery. And when they come and they apologize, subhanAllah, this is amazing. Yusuf does not blame the brothers. Yusuf blames shaytan. مِنْ بَعْدِ أَنْ نَزَغَ الشَّيْطَانُ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ إِخْوَتِي and by blaming shaitan, it becomes so much easier to forgive your siblings and those around you. Realize shaitan wants nothing more than to see your family break apart. This is one of the goals of shaitan. He wants to shatter the family unit. He wants to make brother hate brother, sister hate sister. Father and mother have a fight between the children. Shaitan loves this. We know shaitan loves this. So when you see such a problem in your own family, Rather than immediately blame your family, follow Yusuf and say, Shaitan did this. Shaitan did this, now you realize it, let's come back together and kick Shaitan out of the picture. Yusuf did not even blame his brothers. He blamed Shaitan, even though it wasn't Shaitan that tied him up. 
wasn't shaitan that sold him into slavery it was his brothers so we learn a tactic from surah yusuf and that is realize anytime something like this happens in your heart say my uncle is saying this my aunt is saying this my cousin is saying this it's not them they're good people this is shaitan putting waswasa into them shaitan attempting to do this and actually this is not imaginary it is true and it is real shaitan as our prophet said one of the biggest goals of shaitan is to destroy the family and we learn this from the story the tenth and final point and again much more can be said but because of time the tenth and final point in all of this one thing stands out more than anything else and that is Ya'qub's akhlaq and iman Ya'qub's sabr and tawakkul eventually translated into all of his children following his path you want your children to be pious you must begin with yourself you want your children to love Allah and His Messenger? Look at yourself before you look at them. Look at your own akhlaq. Look at your own manners. Look at your own ibadah. Yaqub is the role model here. And eventually, all of his children followed his path. This is the number one mechanism to preserve Islam and Iman and to preserve the love of Allah amongst your children. It's not by admonishing. It's not by rebuking. It's not by raising your voice and putting punishments. No. The number one mechanism, example. Lead by example. You become the person you want your son or daughter to be. And we see in the story of Yaqub that, in fact, in his case, all the time and anecdotally, the majority of the time, the majority of the time, the children will follow the path of the parents. And that's exactly what Allah says. Pure soil and land gives pure fruits and evil soil and land gives evil fruits. When the soil is pure, when the, when the seed is pure, what's going to happen? Pure fruit is going to come. So you concentrate more on yourself than on your child. And I know that's difficult. You concentrate more on your own relationship with your spouse than your own child. Because when the child sees you and your spouse, the mother and father, the child sees the love and the care, the child sees the akhlaq and the ibadah, this will automatically be absorbed into his or her life. And we learn this from the story of Yaqub alayhi salam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to continue to benefit from the story and allow us to have strong and united families. May Allah protect our children and their children after them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow iman to remain firm in their hearts until their progeny, till the day of judgment. Wa jazakumullahu khairan wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.